to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is John Hersog. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, John is a bank officer with Valley Community Bank in San Jose. He received his Bachelor's of Science degree from San Jose State University, where I happen to get my bachelor's degree. Uh, he got his in May of 1975. His banking career started at Bank of the West, in 1980, and he worked there for 13 years, and then he left as an assistant vice president and branch manager at the Cupertino office. I got an auto loan from him there. <laughs> uh, from 1993 to 2006, John worked at Comerica Bank in the small business group, uh, left as a first vice president, and then from 2006 to the present, he's worked as a first vice president for a Valley Community Bank focused on small business relationships. So thanks for joining me again. I'm very happy to be here. Okay, John. So with that, we'll go ahead and get into our questions. Now, folks, today what we're going to be talking about today is um, small business financing. So a lot of people that are wondering, you know, they're trying to start small businesses these days, or they may have having issues, uh, they need to get financing for the small business. And so we're going to get the picture from the community bank point of view. So what is the state of the banking industry today related to small business banking? Well, I think uh, really uh, the industry, for the most part, it has been business as usual. Uh, right now, currently in the United States, there are approximately 8,000 banks. And the vast majority of those banks have been really applying traditional uh, underwriting standards uh, throughout the years in the good times and now in, this, in these challenging times. Um, However, uh, there have been some banks that uh, had some looser guidelines during the good times, and, um, and that's, that is affecting a lot of small business people out there right now. Okay. Now, when we talk about underwriting, just for people that know, because it's a little bit of a jargon word, uh, and that is, what does it take to qualify for a loan, basically, uh, with the bank? So the, the underwriting process is where the bank is evaluating mm -hmm. The person and whether they qualify for financing. Well, um, you know, uh, right now I think there are two things going on. Um, uh, you know, the um, uh, a lot of small business owners are having a challenge to generate profitability right. sufficient enough to uh, justify being approved for a loan. So that's that's one of the things that's that's actually happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, another factor is. Uh, some of the banks that did have loose underwriting standards have now, the pendulum has swung uh, 180 degrees in the other direction. So instead of uh, providing uh, the traditional underwriting uh, standards, which is looking for cash flow, looking for collateral to support the loan, uh, looking for stable uh, credit history, they're asking for um, uh, more conservative uh, re uh, traditional requirements. Mm -hmm. And so that has put a strain on people's ability to, to, get, uh, yeah. to get qualified in, if they're banking with certain institutions. Yeah. So I've always been able to get the loan with the bank before. What's the deal? Why has it changed? So anyway. Uh. Well, um, <laughs> you know, uh, really there are um, uh, different things that banks do to evaluate the, uh, the credit worthiness mm -hmm. of a small business owner. Mm -hmm. And um, in my opinion, the key, the key factor that uh, small business owners should really focus on is the ability to generate timely and accurate financial statements. Mm -hmm. And um, as, a, as a good rule of thumb, um, you know, when you're starting out and maybe your revenues are under a million dollars, it's, it's okay to maybe generate a financial statement on a quarterly basis, meaning a, a balance sheet and an income and expense statement. Um, but then as the size of, of someone's business is growing, uh, they should uh, focus on really striving to have uh, finan generating financial statements monthly. Mm -hmm. um, and whether a business owner is getting those financial statements to get a loan or not, it's really good business practice to, to, to be able to review your financial position monthly if you're a small business owner. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't do it just for the banker or for the loan request. You really do it for the ongoing um, health of your business to, to really look at the, uh, the trends of the business, 
and monitor those trends and make sure that you're making adjustments uh, quickly enough based on the, the changes that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the key. And, and um, for most small business owners, having a experienced CPA who can help you generate those uh, monthly financial statements is, is key to their long-term success. Um, and what a lot of small business owners don't realize is that when they do apply to a bank for a loan, a business loan, um, the bank will look at the financial position of their balance sheet and put as much importance on that as the uh, financial condition of their income and expense statement. So as a good rule of thumb, uh, uh, having, uh, uh, knowing what level of um, leverage to maintain in your balance sheet and uh, the level of liquidity is valuable. Um, you know, uh, if for example, let's say you're a small business owner and you're looking at your, your monthly balance sheet and it says it, it reports that you have about 600,000 in total liabilities on your balance sheet. Well then, uh, a good rule of thumb is to always strive to make sure that those liabilities don't exceed your net worth on your balance sheet by more than three times. So in that example, uh, striving to have at least uh, not letting your net worth going, go under $200,000 in that example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and during good times, uh, when profitability is stronger, having a goal to get that level of net worth up to uh, two times is even, is even more um, uh, recommended. Because then when, you, when we are in challenging times and if you have a loss, you, you have the ability to uh, still function properly. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good, that's a good uh, uh, key factor to consider. Um, when, uh, when banks are looking at a balance sheet, they'll also look to make sure that uh, the owner is keeping their uh, current assets, which is their cash, their receivables, and their inventory, those are their primary current assets, at least uh, greater than their uh, current liabilities. And uh, ideally, as a business owner, you would want your uh, current assets to be at least one and a quarter times your current liabilities as a minimum and strive to have it over one and a half times uh, uh, when, when times are better. Uh, and this, this ensures that you have enough cash on hand if you're a small business owner to meet your normal uh, bills each month, including your payables and your payroll, and um, maybe uh, unexpected expenses that can come up from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, once, once you're able to you know, generate uh, monthly financial statements or quarterly financial statements, depending on the size of your business, and you're doing a good job, uh, keeping enough liquidity in your balance sheet and enough uh, sufficient uh, uh, amount of leverage, not over leveraging your balance sheet. Um, banks will also look at the condition of your primary assets. So a good rule of thumb is uh, to always stay focused on the uh, collection of your receivables and uh, be real careful on who you're giving trade credit to uh, and having a firm uh, policy and how, how you will do that and how you will follow up if, uh, if, if your customer is not paying you in a timely manner. Um, a good rule of thumb is to try to keep the level of your total receivables um, not more than 15% um, uh, uh, of your total receivables, not more than 90 days past due. Mm -hmm. Now that's very challenging to do right now in this environment. Right. Um, and most small business owners don't have that. But that's, that's the goal to strive for, not to let your 90-day past dues get more than 15% of your total ARs. Because mm -hmm. that can then uh, affect your profitability and uh, the overall um, ability to get financing down the road.